When you think of a minivan or a minibus, you don't think of a sexy, stylish vehicle, but a simple, functional and practical vehicle for moving people and goods. Enter the Hyundai, 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 or let's say Hyundai Stereo. The Stereo replaces the popular and very successful H1 minibus, but what it brings to the table is something remarkably different and hair-turning. You'll be forgiven for first thinking this is an electric vehicle. I thought the very same thing when I first saw its pictures. With its polarizing spaceship-like design, Hyundai is breaking into a premium customer base. The price tells you, tells you that too, but more on that in just a bit. The Stereo is making its mark in the South African market since launch and I can see there are quite a few of them on the road today but we still have to get used to how it looks for sure, judging by how many people still make a 180 degree turn just to make sure their eyes aren't playing tricks on them after seeing it for the first time. I recently had a chance to take one for a spin and I must say Hyundai has put together a really strong product here. This vehicle is very impressive despite its odd looks. What you see here is another iteration of Hyundai's latest design that we've seen in the electric Ionic 5 and other recent concepts from Hyundai. The Stereo is a minivan or a minibus, we can call it whatever you will. It comes in two seating configurations, the 9 or 11 seater and in three variants. You've got the Executive costing 804,900 Rand, the Elite 964,900 Rand and the Luxury costing 1.1,400,900 Rand. These variants are powered by a 4-cylinder 2.2-litre diesel unit making a healthy 130 kilowatts and 430 Nm of torque made it to a silky smooth and very silky smooth I mean 8-speed automatic gearbox. Now if you're looking for a large family vehicle that doesn't compromise much on comfort, practicality and tech, I mean loads of tech, you might want to throw your money this way. Hear me out, a minivan is no stranger to the South African market because lots of people still buy these vehicles and besides the uptake on SUVs and crossovers that manufacturers are forcing down our throats due to global demand, <laughs> um, we are still clear on what types of vehicles we like and minivans are some of these. Besides, how many SUVs can seat 9 or 11 people? Come on now. After spending a few hours behind the wheel of the stereo, I imagined I was a married man with three, maybe four beautiful kids and a lovely golden retriever and thought, you know what, this would be the perfect vehicle for my imaginary family and not because it's merely a huge Wi-Fi router on wheels but a finely tuned package. The unit I drove here is a 9-seater luxury and it comes with all the bells and whistles. The front and passenger seats are heated and ventilated with electronic adjustability. They also covered in very soft plush leather. The second row features captions chairs with heating and ventilation and lots of adjustability, as well as the third and fourth rows. Seating can be configured here as desired, we know how that works. The cabin has plenty of storage pockets and that's really necessary in a family vehicle like this. And Hyundai has made sure that there's storage space anywhere your eyes land. The interior features beautiful ambient lighting all the way to the back of the cabin with all sorts of colors to choose from. That's a very nice touch. Peasant lockers or sun blinds on the sliding door and rear windows provide that extra bit of privacy. The driver is treated to two screens at the front, the digital instrument cluster and infotainment screen which conveniently run Android Auto and Apple CarPlay wirelessly. A very neat and unique feature is the ability to see your blind spot on the driver screen when you flick the indicator switch. Maybe some people will start using the indicators from now on. The Sony sound system is quite decent. I wouldn't say it's the best, but it does its job very good. The stereo features 17-inch alloys and I think they fit the overall design very well. Now, the driving is what impressed me the most. On this top spec model, you have semi-autonomous driving capabilities aided by lane key assist and radar-guided cruise control which keeps you safely in your lane and at a safe distance from the vehicle in front of you by slowing and accelerating to your set speed. The system works so seamlessly and it's unintrusive. It was my first time testing the system on a car and I use it without reading a manual or assistance from another person. With just a few clicks on buttons on the steering wheel, the stereo was already steering, accelerating and braking on its own. 
The ride quality is very compliant and road noise is kept at a minimum, providing this is a perfect vehicle for long trips. And in local roads, the center is very easy to maneuver and it doesn't feel like you're driving a 2.2 ton 5 meter long minivan. It feels like a reasonably large vehicle. Parking is just as easy with the all round 360 degree cameras and parking sensors. The large windows and high driving position means you clearly see what's happening around you. The driver assistance systems give you even more confidence behind the wheel. There are four driving modes and each one does what you'd expect. You've got Echo, Normal, Sport and Smart Plus. You've even got pedal shifters behind the wheel if you fancy that sportier driving experience. But don't hold your breath, you can only get so much sporty driving out of a minivan. But Hyundai threw in almost every modern feature you can expect today. Fuel economy is claimed at 7.8 litres per 100 kilometres and I can say this figure is closely achievable thanks to the very effective driving modes and well calibrated gearbox. Now there you have it, my quick review of the Hyundai area. If you can look past the ultra futuristic looks and can afford a minivan up to 1.1 million rands, which is actually cheaper than the Mercedes-Benz V-Class, you've got yourself a very sensible and Porsche family vehicle that's probably meant to, if not better than most mid-size SUVs available today. For something else that's a bit on its level, you can look at the Toyota Quantum Bus, which may as well be the stereo's most direct competitor. Well, please don't forget to like this the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. Your support is much appreciated. Thank you and see you in the next one.